Hello guys and welcome to Steve Knows. Today I'm showing off five VR accessories for the Quest that actually surprised me with their utility. They're great for the summer, great for comfort, and great for keeping the energy costs down as you can play in the pitch black dark. My Quest is nearly unrecognizable, it's so pimped out of all these accessories. And also comment down below, I am giving away some game keys, so just leave a comment, I'll pick one out at random, and you'll see it on my community page. So enough chin wagging, let's get started. So starting off with the KK Cobb VR K2, this is a fan for your VR headset costing around $50 or £50 available on Amazon. I do have another fan that I'm going to show off that works slightly differently depending on what you want from your VR headset. So this device has a USB-C charging port which is always nice to have a modern standard. I always pull a face when I get a micro USB cable in a box. Because you can set this device to have a constant stream of air into the headset or you can do it so it blows every five seconds. The foam insert is huge compared to the original default in the Quest headset. I have a VR cover one and it's way bigger than that. And that helps disperse the pressure on your face so it's more comfortable, which is nice. It has a light bleeding bit around the nose as well to help keep your immersion, keep it dark inside the headset. But sometimes that gap is handy when I'm trying to find a drink or, you know, navigate the room, it's nice to look down that nose. To get it into the headset, you simply just remove the old insert and push it in. They simply just clip in so it's nice and easy. But for this one, you do have to rearrange the top head strap. You actually attach it to the device instead of the headset this time, which is kind of nice because the bit of plastic that you get inside the Quest that holds the top head strap is very cheap and small and I've snapped mine before and it's incredibly upsetting because you don't get a replacement part. So you run this by pressing the power button and when you do there is a slight noise but you don't notice this when playing a game. It is just a slight little buzz. Hopefully you can hear it now in the video. But when this device is on, you do feel a cool breeze on the T-section of your face. So it's not blowing into your eyes, which I was worried about because it can dry the eyes out. It is blowing air in. But it didn't hit the T-junction, kept me nice and cool when I was playing some VR fitness games. But it does give a feeling like the headset has more weight. Because the insert is so big, I feel like the headset is slightly further away from your face. So it kind of tilts more. So you may need to use a updated head strap for this to be most effective. We do have another fan, it's the Bobo VR F2 ACF. They kind of sound like Top Gun planes, don't they? But this one works slightly differently to the one we just seen. So depending on what your preference is, you may want to go for this one over that one, or that one over this one. So this one is around £36 or $36, perhaps a little bit more. It varies depending on what website you go to. But this one is slightly smaller and it's not built into a facial insert to work, but it does require a certain facial insert to work. But when you buy this fan, it does come with that special insert, so do not worry, it comes bundled with it. So this one is way, way smaller, way lighter. It's USB-C supported as well. It has a two inch cable that comes, which is a perfect size for you to charge this device whilst you're playing your Quest as well. Although if this fan is fully charged, it's gonna last way longer than your Quest does, because this one will last three to five hours. So it's a little less than the other fan. And it also comes with two different modes that work slightly differently as well, which I'll touch on in a second. But this fan works differently because it actually extracts air out of the headset rather than the other one was blowing air into the headset across your T-section to keep you cool. This one is extracting the heat. So the two modes that are available on this are mode one, which is a light breeze. It's a small extraction. Uh, it also makes a small sound, but it's not that loud. Mode two, it's a little bit louder because it's more intense. It's doing an even more intense extraction. And that one, it kind of tickled my eyes a little bit. I could feel that one a lot more. I probably wouldn't use this fan on, on mode one. I wasn't really feeling much noticeable benefit with that. But mode two, when I was getting sweaty, I could feel it and it was, it was lovely. So with both fans, I did still get very sweaty with the fake leather insert. That still got very sweaty, that part of my face. I'm not really sure there's much you can do about that. But it was a better experience when I was playing these intense VR games in hot weather conditions. I live in England, the humidity is intense, so I felt this one worked really well for those sort of conditions. The other fan I kind of felt was better once I was actually really hot because I was getting that breeze. It was like a cool air 
there, it was kind of kind of soothing, actually. So depending on your on your conditions or what you're looking for, hopefully one of these fans have got you covered. And I kind of like the look of the Bobo one. It looks like I've got a hood attachment for the Quest, like it's the the front body of a vehicle. We have an interesting one now. I loved this one. It worked surprisingly well, and it gave me the ability to play virtual reality or enjoy VR content in the dark. This is great for those that don't want to have the light on because energy costs are going through the roof in the UK at the moment. Perhaps you want to block out the sun with blackout curtains, in turn keeping the room cool, or you want to keep the lights off because they generate tons of heat as well. Or maybe you want to play virtual reality late at night and there are other people in the house and that light bleed becomes very distracting whilst they're trying to fall asleep. So this little device, which looks like a laser sight for the Quest headset, is actually an infrared blaster. So the Quest tracks using infrared rays so you can help improve its tracking in low light settings with this device or it lets you play in pitch black darkness. Whether you're watching Netflix, perhaps playing Hyperdash or using hand tracking, this helps that in certain light conditions. So I turned out all of my lights and I got a pop-up saying that it lost my tracking in the pass-through, it was just pitch black. So I put this on, just flicked the switch that was attached to the headset and everything lit up in the room. So I was able to see in the dark through my Quest headset. It was actually really impressive to see it in action. So this one has two settings depending on your room size. Setting one is for a 20 meter squared space. Mode two is for up to a 40 meter squared space, which means Space Pirate Trainer in the dark is possible. Don't worry about battery life on this thing as well because it is really small. It uses the Quest's power, but it uses such, such small amounts. You'll use 2.2% per hour of your Quest battery power on mode one and 4.5% for mode two. So your Quest headset lasts between two to three hours anyway, so you're sacrificing 4.5% or 9% during that play session, which is nothing. And if you have an Elite battery strap or an other battery strap like a Bobo battery dock, this device actually has a USB-C power pass through attached to it, so you can still charge your headset whilst using this IR blaster if you wanted a longer play session. This would be especially good if you're into your horror games as well. You can actually make it extremely dark in the room that you're playing whilst people are watching on the TV and create a really good atmosphere. Such a good idea and it works really well. Now on to a head strap that is the greatest Quest solution, even over the Vive Deluxe audio strap modification, I think, especially when you're comparing price. The comfort here and the reduction in facial damage is brilliant. So this is the Bobo VR head strap. It's very lightweight and it has an interesting design that kind of resembles a halo strap. Halo straps are a favorite in the VR community space. It's a design that the Quest 2 doesn't actually use. Even the meta official elite head straps are not using a halo design. It's black and white, which is fitting for the Quest design. It works by sliding the arms of this headset onto the Quest arms and then attaching a very small piece of Velcro through the forehead strap hook. You're then ready to go. The huge cushion of this head strap that goes over the forehead spreads the load of the Quest over a large surface area. It's also very cushioned at the back of the head strap as well, which sits under the dip in the back of your head, where the head becomes the neck. <laughs> it also has a twisting knob to tighten or loosen the strap, which makes it super easy to adjust. And it also has several joints at its center to fit all head shapes. And the extra thing here that makes it incredible is that it has two points of additional support on top of the head. This creates an even distribution of the load over the top of the head, which is extremely hard. It then makes the Quest feel incredibly light. And I'm not just saying that, it really does make the Quest feel like it, it weighs a feather. But it does mean the Quest doesn't sit exactly flush across your face. That means it's not squeezing your head, applying pressure to the face, unless you really tighten up that strap at the back which is a pro and a con because of that, when you're moving your head around like crazy, the little give that it has makes the quest kind of wobble. So if you're playing an intense, fast paced game and you're thinking about turning your head or moving around the room really fast, then this could kind of become a little annoying. If you're playing slower paced games and games that have a really long sort of campaign or you're playing for a very long time, then I can't recommend this enough. And finally, an alternative to the Quest Elite battery strap. Here you can extend your playtime massively without spending a fortune on that head strap or playing your Quest whilst it's plugged in 
to a wall socket. So this battery is compatible with your original Quest strap and additional third party straps as well, including the Elite strap. If you have the one that doesn't have the battery attachment due to the different attachments that come with this accessory, it comes with two different attachments, one that works with the official Bobo strap and the Elite strap and one that works with other additional straps that you have. It's just this Velcro piece that you wrap around the back of the headset. So this Bobo battery dock has a feature that I actually love that I'll touch on in a second, but this is a 140 gram 5,200 milliamp hour battery, and the Quest battery is roughly 3,600 milliamp hours. So you do get an additional 150% more game time with this battery. The battery can charge up to 80% in two hours, so it is a slow charge, but it's designed that way to reduce the deterioration of its capacity. It can be charged with a USB-C cable, and it has a four light indicator, so you know of its power level. But what I love about this is not only its design, that it, the fact that it looks stunning and feels high quality, is that it acts as a counterweight to try and relieve the stress of the pressure on your face. Traditional straps are really bad at this, and this can help massively. But what's great about this is it's attachable via a magnetic dock. So if you don't want to use the weight it's dead and you don't want to have that counterweight which actually increases the overall weight of the headset, you can just simply undock it and put it to one side. And if you want it again, you can grab it and just magnetically stick it to the back of your head as if you're some sort of cyborg. Love it. So bringing all of these accessories together, we seem to create a super quest, which does weigh significantly more with all of these accessories on, but it feels way more comfortable than the traditional strap and insert on your face. The support of that head strap, the calling fan, the counterweight, the battery giving a longer play session, the IR blaster for improved tracking in low light situations, even in pitch black, I really do love these accessories. I was over Quest accessories for a long time. If you've been following this channel, I've just kind of been ignoring them. I was kind of done with them. But this has kind of relit my joy for them because I genuinely believe these are great for the summertime, comfort, sweat, humidity, energy bills. It's just a great fit for the current situation that at least I'm in, that I'm sure some of you will be as well. So that's it for me today, guys. I'll link everything down below in the description. None of the links will be affiliate, just the BAU links for you. So you know there's no benefit of me hyping the products. I do actually enjoy them and think that they're helpful. So please subscribe to the channel for more games, news, and reviews. Hopefully I'll see you next time. And I do actually have so much on the way that you will be really excited to see. So have a great week, guys. Happy gaming. Good day!